is Blake Williams coming from Chicago and he's presenting a case of upgrade assistance. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Blake Williams coming from the University of Chicago. Um, thank you for having me this morning. I'm gonna be talking about a case of upgaze restriction. So we have our patient ZW. He's a 42 year old male who presented to the emergency department with a two month history of right sided initially and then bilateral numbness and weakness and a three day history of difficulty ambulating and worsening num uh, numbness. Uh, his past medical history is significant for a developmental delay. It was unspecified, but he had muscle tonicity in the neck and back as an infant, as well as congenital right-sided ptosis. He's had a number of surgeries in the past. He had a right ptosis repair with frontalis fixation in 79, followed shortly by a strabismus surgery for a right upgaze paralysis. Um, and he also had a negative cardiac cath, which was part of the workup for his um, diffuse numbness. For social history, um, he has no smoking history, he quit drinking uh, shortly before presentation. He had been drinking a few beers a night. Um, he's single and worship with his father. Uh, no family history of neurologic or ocular diseases. And he has a history of coronary artery, artery disease and MI in his father. He has no known allergies and has been taking aspirin 81 since the cardiac workup shortly before he presented. For his hospital course, he initially presented in June of 2015 at an outside hospital for this weakness and numbness. A, CT, a head CT on June 1st showed ventricular megaly, uh, predominantly left-sided. Um, he got an MRI of the cer cervical spine without significant findings. CTA was normal. And his diagno diagnosis was congenital hydrocephalus um, and discharge on aspirin. He was admitted about two months later on July 31st with worsening numbness and recent gait instability, a repeat MRI showed uh, stable hydrocephalus sim similar to the outside imaging. Uh, neurology and neurosurgery were consulted. Um, no in intervention was indicated, but then the next day it was noticed that he had bilateral upgaze restriction that was uh, new and so ophthalmology was consulted. On ocular examination, uh, visual acuity was uh, 2070 corrected to 2020 pinhole on the right, 2020 on the left. Pupils were symmetric and equally reactive. Uh, full visual fields, pressure was 13 in each eye. And then the interesting findings were on extraocular motility. He had a right exotropia um, with um, inability to look up or down. He adducted on up gaze and abducted on down gaze. While on the left eye, he just had an up gaze restriction and he adducted on up gaze. And then the very interesting finding was that he had a convergence retraction nystagmus noted on up gaze, and um, it took a, a second examination by ophthalmology to confirm this. This is not the patient um, that we saw. We weren't able to get pictures before he was discharged, but this is pathognomonic for the condition that he had. Uh, significantly, you can see uh, when he, he has an up gaze restriction um, as well as a few other findings, which I'll get into. So I wanted to show a quick video of the convergence retraction nystagmus. Actually, what we are seeing is convergence retraction nystagmus, but you can't really appreciate the fact that the eyes are actually retracting. But this is what convergence retraction nystagmus looks like from straight on in somebody being asked to look up. Now, looking from the side as she's being asked to look up, you can see the eyes actually retracting in the orbit in this example of retraction nystagmus. So, so I tried to get a video on my iPhone, but it was not nearly as good as that. Okay, for the rest of the physical exam, uh, we had a portable foot lamp and he had some minor ptosis in the right eye, some blepharitis in the left eye, but basically everything else was normal. His lenses were clear. He had cup to disc of 0.4, um, normal uh, disc macula and vessels in the retina. Um, this is taken from the, neuro uh, from the neurologist, their physical exam. Um, no cranial nerve exam 
finding except for the, the eye exam and on the sensory exam, he had decreased sensation bilaterally in the lower extremities and hand. And then also he had a narrow based slow gait. Um, so to recap, uh, we have a 42 year old male with a two month history of numbness and weakness who presents with gait instability, worsening numbness and up gaze restriction with convergence retraction nystagmus. So um, we got a number of studies and everything was largely normal. CBC, metabolic panel, tox screen, they did a Mycene and Gravis panel, copper was normal, B12 normal, um, CRP was less than 0.1, and no abnormalities on the lumbar puncture either. Uh, so this is the uh, M MRI that he, he got just showing diffuse enlargement of the lateral ventricles, left the ventricular megaly is more pronounced on the left side than the right, but this was stable compared to the outside imaging. And then just um, another view showing the um, ventricular enlargement. And there are no other abnormalities seen on those scans. So what is the differential diagnosis of an up gaze restriction? There's a long list, but basically the top, top two or three are, will be seen in the vast majority of cases. The first is uh, dorsal midbrain syndrome or paranoid syndrome. Also progressive supranuclear palsy, which present similar to similarly to Parkinson's disease, and then a few other rare, w rare ones, which I could not find much information on. Uh, in terms of other imaging, a CT cisternogram was recommended by neurosurgery, but they actually didn't do it at uh, Loyola, which is the hospital I was at. Um, they did an MR sign, um, showed no CSF flow, was appreciated in the third and fourth ventricles, or the cerebral aque aqueduct with some minor flow at the foramen magnum. But since this hydrocephalus was stable compared to before, they, they didn't think it was a huge problem. So he was diagnosed with dorsal midbrain syndrome, likely secondary to hydrocephalus. And I already kind of went through his workup. So dorsal midbrain syndrome is also known as paranoid syndrome, sylvian aqueduct syndrome, uh, pretectal syndrome, or corbrosalis elschnig syndrome. Uh, there are five main uh, criteria for diagnosing this syndrome. Uh, it's basically a clinical syndrome characterized by a cluster of eye findings and um, with movement abnormalities and pupil pupillary dysfunction. The, the first of which is paralysis of up gaze, which was kind of alerted us to his condition. The vertical palsy supranuclear, so the doll's head maneuver, which is more of a reflex, is preserved early on, but eventually all upper upward gaze mechanisms fail. Uh, second is pseudo argyl Robertson pupils. As you know, argyl Robertson is seen with syphilis, but the difference between this finding and actual argyl Robertson is that in paranodes, the pupils are mid dilated, and um, in syphilis, it, they're very small. Uh, the third is convergence re retraction nystagmus, nystagmus, which is virtually pathognomonic for paranoid syndrome. Fourth is eyelid retraction, um, also known as Collier sign, which we see a lot in uh, thyroid eye disease. And finally, conjugate down gaze in the primary position, the setting sun sign, which gets its name from seeing the, the sclera um, and the patient is looking down when they're trying to look straight ahead. The main, main cause of paranoid syndrome is a pineoloma. That's the correct board answer. <laughs> um, this shows a large pineal gland tumor pressing on the dorsal midbrain. Um, but some other causes include other brain tumors, really any compression of the um, tectum. Hydrocephalus, especially after shunt failure, failure so it was, it was thought that this patient's hydrocephalus caused his paranoid syndrome. Other causes, multiple sclerosis, vascular lesions, uh, myasthenia that can mimic a vertical gaze palsy, and uncle herniation. So in terms of epidemiology, there are three main groups of patients who present with paranoid syndrome, the first of which is a young patient with a um, brain tumor of the pineal gland or pinealoma, which um, is most common. Also women's in, women in their 20s to 30s with multiple sclerosis can present with this. And finally, older patients following a stroke to the upper brain stem. Uh, for pathophysiology, paranoids result from an injury to the dorsal midbrain or the tectum, um, specifically compression or ischemic damage to the me mesencephalic tectum, and it includes the superior colliculus, which is adjacent to the ocular motor and Edinger-Westphal nuclei. 
I wanted to show some anatomy just to highlight the proximity of the pineal gland to the superior colliculi. And um, obviously, if you get enlargement of the pineal gland through tumor, you'll get compression of the area and um, dysfunction of the um, superior colliculi. And then this is just to show the um, control centers for horizontal gaze, which is the uh, PPRF or pontine paramedi paramedian reticular formation as well as vertical gaze, which is the rostral interstitial nucleus of the MLF. And you can see the horizontal gaze center is next is very close to the um, adducens nucleus, and the vertical gaze center is very close to the oculomotor nucleus. And it just helps, if you help um, visualize that, you can remember the association between the two. Um, treatment and resolution. Treatment is primarily directed towards the etiology of the dorsal midbrain syndrome. Thorough workup, including neuroimaging, is essential. He got the MR sign to evaluate his flow. Uh, the eye findings generally improve over the first three to six months, and it, if they don't improve after that time, it's unlikely that they will. And um, if the cause is from acute hydrocephalus, um, especially shunt failure, if you correct the shunt failure, correct the hydrocephalus, they should get rapid resolution of symptoms. So back to our patient, um, given his stable hydrocephalus and the chronicity of his condition, um, no further intervention was recommended at this time by neurology or neurosurgery, and he was planned to follow up with ophthalmology and neurology in clinic in a few weeks, and hopefully he would have improved. Um, then I did a quick literature search. Um, it's very difficult to find anything on dorsal midbrain syndrome since it is so rare. I was only able to find this paper from 1990. Um, this author kind of put together 206 patients with the syndrome. And the most common sign is pupillary abnormalities. 96% uh, of the patients had that. I just think it's interesting that only 34% had the um, classic convergence retraction nystagmus, which is quite rare to see, but if you do see it, you, you can nail the diagnosis. And then for etiology, most commonly hydrocephalus, 39%, but also stroke and tumor can cause it as well. And they had mentioned in this paper that there was a um, large amount of sister sarcosis going around <laughs> with these patients, so that might have made the hydrocephalus more common than uh, pineoloma, because more recently I've read that pineoloma is the most common cause. Here are my references. Thanks for having me. Any, any questions?